the nuclear power plant does not stand alone. It is underlaid by a massive industrial infrastructure. You have to mine millions of tonnes of uranium fossil fuel. You just watch those trucks. They're as big as this, as this church, a truck. And then you've got to mill it, crush it into little fine particles, that more fossil fuel. And then the uranium is enriched in America and at Paducah. They use two 1,500 megawatt coal-fired plants to enrich the uranium. Oh, but it doesn't produce any CO2, right? Well, people should be sued. I mean, there must be a law that people can't lie. This is so important, and it's a medical problem. And we sit back, you know, waiting in our, waiting, in our consulting rooms for the patients to present with their lumps and their indigestion or their hematemesis or their hemoptysis or their pneumothorax, and it's too late. And we don't get out and say, okay, I want to educate you about medicine. I mean, there are lots of things we could do, like why you shouldn't hand your antibiotics over the fence to Mrs. Brown, because a year ago you had the same symptoms as Mrs. Brown, and why don't you have the rest of my antibiotics? I mean, people, people don't know anything about viruses and bacteria, and that's because we haven't taught them. But we must teach them about this too. The other thing is that, the, that at the enrichment plant at Paducah, Kentucky, the uranium is converted to a gas called uranium hexafluoride, which is very corrosive and very hot. And there are hundreds of miles of pipes containing this gas that is filtered through a cascade of filters. On one side stays uranium-235, which is the one that is the fissionable one, and the other side Actually, it's the reverse. It says U238, which is non-fissionable, and this is 235. 235 is present in 0.7% in natural uranium and must be enriched to 3% for use in reactors, over 50%, and you've got bomb-grade material, and the bomb dropped on Hiroshima was a uranium bomb. But because there are hundreds of miles of these pipes that are very hot, beside them are other pipes containing CFC gas. Now, you know... Um, that the Montreal Protocol banned CFC gas because it destroys the ozone. And in Australia, one in nine people now get malignant melanoma because the sun is so intensely toxic. And, you know, old people are just absolutely covered in SCCs and BCCs. I mean, you sit in a dermatology clinic, it's unbelievable. That's from the sun. And we are very racist in Australia. The Aborigines have the highest infant mortality in the world, dreadful conditions, we stole their land, but we like to lie in the sun and turn brown um, in the summer um, and, and, you know, get a lot of melanin in our skins like the Aborigines. Anyway, so this CFC is, circulates through hundreds of miles of pipes and 93% of the CFC 114 gas, which is a commonest here, um, is released in America from the uranium enrichment plant, and it's 10 to 20,000 times uh, more potent as a global warmer than CO2. Fancy that. How did I find that out? Oh, well, I called the EPA, and I found this really nice woman called Nancy something, and she sent me all the data. And there are many other actual global warming gases used in the production of uranium for nuclear power. So... I can't tell you the sense of indignation I have that people are lying about this, particularly the nuclear industry, saying they're the answer to global warming. And I would like all of you to take this into your hearts and souls too and your bones and get out there and teach your friends. And if they don't listen, hit them on the head. Okay. Um, so that's 